Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about the Mythic Plus Dungeons in Season 4. The PTR is already up and they also released a huge update and a lot of changes to some of the dungeons. Now, let me summarize those for you up front before we make the tier list. There were a lot of problems, a lot of bad designs with the Mythic Plus Dungeons of Dragonflight at the beginning. And we went with those bad designs and problems through the seasons that we had previously. Now Blizzard is doing the budget season and they're making those fixes and selling them basically as a new feature. But nevertheless, those fixes are not bad at all for some of the dungeons. And as we do the tier list, we're going to go through them as well. Alright, we're starting with Holes of Infusion and if there were no changes, I would have easily put this into the D tier. But the changes that they made are actually spot on. First, Checkpoint was added after defeating the Frog Boss. One of the worst designs in this dungeon was the runtime. If you died, it was probably faster to just zone out and do another dungeon instead of running back to the spot where you died. So now this is going to help a little bit. It's going to reduce the runtime, but let's say if you die to the gauntlet at the end, it's still going to be a significant amount of time that you have to spend running back. However, this is definitely a good change. The spawn rate of crashing tsunami during the gauntlet is reduced, I would assume. So uh, that is going to make it a little bit easier, hopefully. The uh, containment apparatuses, which are those orbs in the beginning of the dungeon, their damage is reduced almost by half, which is definitely going to help, especially on fortified weeks. And the Gale Singers, they have their uh, abilities removed, and from what it seems, they're going to have a swirly on the ground that you need to avoid. So that's also a good change for the trash, specifically after the second, uh, sorry, yeah, after the second boss. Uh, and then there's some visuals that are also uh, added to the fight. Now, when it comes to bosses, Watcher, Iridius, uh, Titanic uh, Glow now has a visual. That's good. Overload uh, around the player, also visual. And the power field that you drop is going to gradually grow in size. So maybe that means that you can outrun it after you drop the circle on the ground, which supposedly is going to make it a little bit easier, especially for some classes that have problems running out fast. Then we have the third boss adjustments, the visuals on the ice boulders that are going to explode. Uh, I think this is going to be good because there's two main problems with that boss. One is those uh, boulders just exploding and killing people without them even knowing that it's there. And then uh, when they get summoned, sometimes you're running back from the big circles that um, um, spawned in, in one of the phases of the boss. And if they spawn right in front of you, you can actually die and get stuck there. I have some videos you can check on my channel where this happened to me multiple times. It's very unpleasant. This is not getting fixed, but this is actually a good uh, option to at least uh, handle the first problem. And then the last boss, uh, the castaway now occurs at 50% health, uh, which is uh, that gauntlet phase where you're sent to the other end of the map. You have to run back and kill the four mobs, etc. So uh, that means, if I'm reading this correctly, that we are only going to get one of these phases per boss, which is basically a nerf to the boss. Overall, it's a good thing. Now, uh, the place is still going to be this small. It's going to be quite bad, but uh, definitely it's going to move up from the D tier. It's probably going to be a little bit more pleasant. The bosses are still going to be very hard in Tyrannica weeks. The trash may be a little bit easier. So I am um, thinking to put it either between B and C. Uh, I think right in the middle would be exactly where I would put it. Uh, but let's uh, let's put it at uh, B for now. Nah, I'm, I'm going to regret this. Let's put it at C uh, and then uh, move on to the next dungeon. Azure Vault. The biggest problem with Azure Vault was actually the timer. I remember some keys during Season 1 which were in the range of 23, maybe 24, where we would play perfectly the whole key, we would probably have just one or two deaths, and then we still wouldn't time the dungeon by a few seconds. They actually increased the timer during Season 1, and now they're going to be adding one more minute to the timer. Maybe not sufficient, it's definitely not going to be to the level that we're used to in Season 3, where uh, the dungeon timers were very lenient, and you might argue, okay, you can time a plus 25 Black Rook Cult with uh, 23 deaths, maybe that's too much, but Azure Vault is in the other spectrum of that chart, where even if you played good, it still wouldn't be enough. 
Uh, so they're working in the right direction. This one minute is definitely going to be welcome. Uh, maybe a little bit more would have been better, but at least the problem is acknowledged and now it's finally addressed in uh, Season 4. Now, there's a whole bunch of trash uh, mechanics here that are slightly, uh, slightly adjusted. Uh, some casts are increased, some casts will be less frequent. All of this is actually uh, quite welcome. I'm not going to go into detail uh, towards them, but supposedly that's going to make the trash a little bit easier throughout the whole dungeon as this affects uh, almost every section. And then going to the bosses, uh, the first boss, Erupting Fishers, now follows the current target player. This is the frontal that uh, the tank can use to kill some of the sprouts. And uh, I think it was uh, something that he could he could dodge before that. Now they won't be able to dodge it. Uh, however, uh, having a little bit of adjustment maybe and hit a little bit more sprouts, that is actually definitely welcome. They probably have no problem surviving the hit. So this is basically a welcome change. Asia Blade, uh, reduce the frequency of periodic damage during uh, the transition phase, whatever you want to call it. Um, so basically, everybody's going to be taking a little bit less damage because it's going to be ticking uh, every 2.5 seconds instead of every 2 seconds. And to be honest, this is probably the worst part of the dungeons, this chaotic phase where uh, balls are shooting out of the balls and everybody's taking damage, running uh, around the room and you're trying to heal. So making this a little bit easier, it's not going to make it feel better, but it's a change uh, again in the right direction. And then some changes to the last boss. Uh, the oppressive miasma is removed, which means that you can now freely move around the room, uh, which is great. It kind of changed back to the crackling vortex, for vortex now has a larger movement radius, but uh, it should be easier to dodge these now because you can run around the room without any problem and without worrying that uh, you're getting slowed, etc. And then uh, there's going to be damage pulsing from the crystals that spawn uh, when the boss uh, shreds them out, uh, which is kind of like a buff, I guess. Uh, but you just have to focus this one and kill it as quickly as possible uh, so that um, the boss uh, doesn't pulse much damage. Overall good changes, it's not going to move the dungeon much in my uh, personal chart. I would say before that I would probably put it into C, but maybe it's going to be good enough to go into B now with the increased timer, with the changes and everything making it slightly easier. Um, so I think it's fair to give it a B in this chart. Drakenhide Hollow. This was actually probably one of the better dungeons that we had from the original Dragonflight pool. And what is going to happen here is a lot of the trash is actually going to get nerfed by some of the abilities being removed. Uh, the mobs that nobody put uh, are getting changed. We don't know what that means because we never pulled those, right? And then uh, we have some of the abilities like I think Touch of Decay was a disease that was applied to players. So now this is removed. Uh, even the Sting Brat now is going to have the frontal um, being static. So if you get targeted, you can just move to the side and not get hit, which was not true uh, before. Um, and then uh, all of this is going to make the trash a little bit easier. Uh, the trash was actually, let me put it this way, it was very hard for some classes who couldn't dispel some of the, the spells, and it was not so hard for some of the other classes that didn't have that problem. So hopefully that's going to level the playing field and make it a, a little bit uh, easier. Now the hardest boss in the dungeon was actually the first boss. Uh, everything else was, uh, I guess, uh, tuned okay, uh, let's put it this way. But the first boss would give you a lot of problems, especially on high tyrannical keys. So uh, what's going to happen here is uh, there is some nerf reduced to the haste bonus that uh, they're getting, uh, I think, when uh, one of the, the other bosses dies. Mark for butchery damage frequency has been increased to 1 second instead of uh, 0 0.5 seconds. Uh, so that's good. That's the uh, fixate that one of the mob does. So uh, you should have easier time healing through that as people are going to be taking less damage. And then the Gash Frenzy, one of the mobs jumping around, uh, etc. It's going to do uh, less damage and its duration is going to be uh, decreased to 15 seconds, uh, which uh, I guess it's, it's uh, also fine. So they're nerfing the first boss a little bit. I think this is spot on and this is going to make it uh, kind of on par with the rest of the bosses. And uh, before these changes, which are also making the dungeon easier, I was thinking whether to put it between A or, or S. 
but I think it's fair to put it into an S tier now, as this is probably going to be one of the more enjoyable and uh, I would say easier dungeons compared to, let's say, Holes of Infusions. So uh, we're probably going to spend a lot of time playing this dungeon uh, instead of some of the more difficult ones. Easy S tier. Augeter Academy was one of the other dungeons with relatively good design that people actually enjoyed a lot. And although it also had uh, tight timers on higher keys, there were very few problems there, mainly including the Crowd and the um, Void boss. Before that, the second boss, actually, you could pick different routes there, which was great. Uh, so I, I'm surprised that the Void boss didn't see any changes, but the biggest change is with the Crowd, which is the Bird boss. The Firestorm fre frequency has been reduced, which means that the swirlies that you get on the ground are going to be less frequent. That's actually nice. And Savage Pack initial and periodic damage has been reduced. Now, this is the tank uh, buster, so to speak. And uh, they didn't say how much um, it's reduced with, uh, but uh, this was something that could actually kill tanks easily. Uh, and it happened a lot during uh, Season 1. So uh, whatever the reduction is, it's very welcome. And uh, hopefully uh, this is going to make it a little bit easier for tanks uh, and basically everybody else. Because if the tank dies, uh, then we all know what happens. So those nerfs are actually quite welcome. Uh, the last boss is getting a new ability called Unleash Energy. It's also not stated here what exactly it is. We're going to see, I guess, uh, soon when we start doing runs on the PTR. Uh, but it sounds like uh, some AoE damage that uh, we're going to be taking at some point uh which probably is going to be fine the main um i guess problem with this boss is people dodging the orbs uh not healing through the damage so that should be fine and there are also some um adjustments to the trash which are not not significant but also welcome so this dungeon is going to basically see its uh, biggest uh, problem uh, being solved with the tank buster uh, and overall it's going to remain basically at the same place where it was in the uh, beginning of the season one so uh, that's also a uh, relatively pleasant dungeon it's also between a and s um i guess we can put it into s because it gives you a lot of options to um, change your route and it also has that buff in the beginning which is uh, quite interesting to play with uh, not something that you see in the other dungeons so very high A or a uh, low S I think is fair for Al Guitar Academy All right, Neltaros is a dungeon that was famous with its chains that you could use to kill huge amounts of mobs at the same time. They got adjusted during the season when the dungeon was active as well, but they're getting changed again now. So uh, they could be used only once before every teammate can actually uh, take one and use them at the same time and kill all the enemies. And instead of doing damage, now they're going to stun all the enemies and increase the damage they take by 50% for just 5 seconds. Now this is actually a huge change because before that there were mobs that you wouldn't ever fight in this dungeon because you would always kill them with chains. That would take some time to set up but then uh, you would just uh, annihilate the pack and move to the next one. Now, although uh, you're going to have to fight those mobs, right? No matter how damage you do for 5 seconds, you're not going to kill those mobs on higher keys, which means that uh, you're going to get increased dungeon time just because you're going to be stuck fighting trash for longer periods of time. Um, that is going to be interesting. We, we have to see how this uh, turns out to be. But I would suspect that, uh, especially for groups that were not coordinated very well and they were not utilizing the chains to their max potential, this is going to be an okay change for them, as they were probably fighting those packs uh, all together at the same time. Uh, when it comes to bosses, Chargat, which is the chain boss, uh, the Fiery Focus, which was a circle that was around the boss during the transition, it's removed, and now it channels damage to the current player, which I assume has to be the tank. Uh, so that should be okay uh, as long as, I, I don't know if it's going to be dodgeable or not, but the tank should be fine, right? Uh, so that is actually welcome, especially for melee classes that uh, had hard times hitting the boss during that transition. And then uh, the chains that uh, connect, some to the, uh, connect to the players and the boss has to go through them, uh, they will per persist through that, which is means that if somebody dies, uh, you can still finish the boss and uh, transition it back to the first phase. So uh, those are definitely welcome, not huge, but definitely welcome. 
And then the last boss has some changes. Uh, the Curse of the Dragon Horde now stacks and the duration is reduced to 30 seconds instead of 5 minutes. Now, I'm not sure how to treat this because uh, the, the curse would stack initially as well. And, um, but it would last 5 minutes, so you, you had to dispel everybody at some point. Uh, now, they made some changes to the curse throughout the season. They removed the damage from it, uh, so it's actually healable. Uh, not the whole damage, of course, but um, some, some classes didn't even have a curse dispel, right? Uh, so, I think this is a weird change. Uh, we have to see how it plays out because... For classes and for groups that have a curse dispel, that's fine. But um, we don't know actually how it's going to work. So if you get two stacks, do you um, refresh the duration to 30 seconds? Or the first stack is eventually going to fall off and you'll be left with only one then? Uh, those are interesting questions. But this is going to be a problem for groups that do not have a curse dispel. Uh, which in my opinion is just not fair and should not be in the game. But different uh, different topic. Also, uh, the Azure Stone of Might has been removed. This is actually one of the abilities that you use to break the shield of the boss, and this is the charge. And uh, many people would have problems with the charge because you would charge into a swirly and you would hit the boss, but then you would also die. So uh, not having this ability is going to be welcome because uh, every time the boss fight happened, you were praying, oh, please, God, uh, let me not have that one. Let me have one of the others. Uh, so uh, I think this is actually quite welcome. And uh, it's going to reduce the amount of deaths because people would die through this uh, all, all the time. Uh, so some changes that could impact the dungeon significantly. But I think uh, it's going to stay basically at the same place uh, where it was during um, the season 2, I think, uh, where we had it. So maybe it's fair to put it into A. Uh, it was between... I'm actually not a fan of this dungeon with uh, the chains and everything. Maybe it's going to be better now. Uh, Thinking between B and A, uh, let's put one dungeon into A as well, because uh, what we have uh, left is definitely not going to get into that spot. Uh, so A for Neltaras. Not good offensive. This dungeon basically gets no changes, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the longest dungeon that we saw so far. With, uh, I think it was a 40 minute timer, which is just way too long. Some dungeons you're doing 20 minutes for not good. You basically have to spare the time for doing two dungeons, uh, but you're just going to do that one. Uh, now, there are some trust adjustments that are uh, basically welcome. Uh, some uh, abilities are removed and some damage is reduced, but there's still uh, so much trash in this area. Uh, some of the trash pools are ridiculous. And then uh, you have to fly from place to place on the dragon, which is cool if you do it once or twice, but uh, definitely not welcome for a dungeon that you have to do repeatedly over the duration of the season. Uh, so definitely not a fan of that as well. And then some of the bosses, uh, actually apart from the first boss, which is basically not even a boss if you do it correctly, but... Uh, the other three bosses actually do uh, a lot of uh, damage, significant amounts of damage. And uh, the last boss, if uh, you get to there and you don't uh, CC the ads correctly, uh, you just wipe and you wasted 40 minutes. So I'm, I'm a huge not a fan of this dungeon. Uh, the only changes to the bosses that we see are uh, the storm winds during the intermission of the last boss. Uh, it's reduced, so that's the swirl it's on the ground. You're gonna get them less frequently, but this is not going to change uh, the fact that you have to CC ads, heal through it, etc. Uh, so basically, this was one of the unpleasant places uh, that uh, we had to endure during Season 1, and I don't think that's going to change uh, a lot. Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I, personally, if you ask me, I'm gonna put this into D. Uh, I just don't like the place. It's not the most difficult dungeon, but uh, just the design of it and everything that happens inside, the duration that I mentioned several times already. Uh, so it's between C and D. Um, so uh, I think I'm going to leave it here because if I have to compare it with Holes of Infusion, Holes of Infusion was probably worse before, but with the changes, now it's definitely going to be better. Uh, so um, I, I guess this either goes after Holes of Infusion or just leave it into the D tier. Ruby Life Pools is a very interesting dungeon. In my opinion, this was one of the not the best, but one of the very well-designed dungeons during Season 1. But people wouldn't like to play it because it was insanely hard, especially before the nerfs. 
Uh, short story that I could tell you is uh, my guild was still alive in season one, and we had this healer who would play uh, keys and do keys with us after the raid. And he was like, guys, I'm going to heal every key for you, but I'm not going to Ruby Lipos because this place is extremely difficult. I don't want to go there ever again. And he never went there ever again, even after the nerves because of that initial perception of the dungeon. Uh, now, the problem with the dungeon from one side is the difficulty because the bosses are, are hard, uh, the trash is also hard, although some of the mechanics are very interesting. Uh, and then there were some problems with, let's say, the second boss and the boulders that it would shoot. They would just uh, hit a curb on the ground and explode and wipe your party, even if you bait it correctly. Things like that. Uh, some of the damage uh, from the mobs before the last boss was ridiculous. And then the biggest, uh, I guess, key breaker was the last boss with the amount of damage that would go out uh, and the coordination that you needed to actually do this boss, uh, bait the swirlies correctly, uh, etc. Um, and use, of course, defensives at the correct time. Now, the the, the last boss is actually getting some nerfs. Uh, the dot that you're getting from the dragon, uh, its uh, duration has been increased to 4 seconds, which means that the healer is going to have a little bit more time to heal you up. And the damage uh, that it takes has been reduced by 25%. I think this is very welcome because uh, the damage was ridiculous, uh, even after the nerfs. Uh, so maybe this is going to make the dungeon uh, a little bit better, a little bit more welcoming. Uh, the thrash is still going to be extremely difficult on 4 to 5 weeks. Uh, the other bosses are also pumping a lot of damage and are big uh, checks for your group. Um, so all of this is still going to have the perception of the dungeons being relatively low uh, because it's still going to be very difficult. Uh, but uh, with the nerves and everything else and with the great design difficulty aside, uh, I think we can easily put this into the B tier. Um, it's going to be, in my opinion, it's going to be better than Halls of Infusion. I would assume that uh, some people would have different perceptions of those two and maybe put them into a different order. Uh, but for me, this is definitely going in front of uh, Halls of Infusion. So um, definitely see before the nerfs for me. Uh, I think I'm brave enough to put it into the B tier um, after Azure Vault. Uh, with the premise that, of course, depending on the week and the affixes, uh, sometimes it's going to drop down to C. But uh, let's put it here. B tier for Ruby Life Pools. And that leaves us with Udeman, which basically sees absolutely no changes whatsoever. Uh, I'm actually expecting to see something in the future as the PTR goes on, because uh, as I'm going to share with you in a second, this is probably the worst dungeon that we had. And uh, just uh, meddling with the first boss, uh, which was the easiest uh, of the whole dungeon, including Crash, uh, is just something that... Uh, we, we don't care about uh, whatsoever. Now, the dungeon has a lot of problems. Uh, there's many bosses that uh, you're basically, as a healer, uh, relying on people to either use their personals or uh, have something that uh, can dispel bleeds in your group like Evoker and things like that. Uh, then even on the last boss, people just wouldn't take their um, removal of movement impairing abilities, uh, which would make the boss unhealable, right? And if everybody used them, then basically there's nothing to heal, right? Uh, the, the boss with the stun, uh, the bleeds that we already mentioned, the fiery boss, uh, basically this was the place that I was avoiding the most uh, in, I think it was season 1 with, when it was active. And uh, seeing no changes, that basically leaves that into D tier easily. Uh, this is still going to be the most avoidable place uh, for me. Uh, so, I, as I said, I hope that we see more changes to this because it's a very unpleasant place to go to, especially for an organized group, because if you have people using their defensives, if you have people using their dispels, uh, if you have coordination with how to stun uh, the, the, the third boss, etc., uh, all of that makes it a little bit more easier and pleasant to play, but for bugs, this is a nightmare, this is hell, and uh, you're going to be avoiding this as much uh, as you can. So, uh, at the end of the day, this is how the tier list looks like. Uh, it seems like a balanced season, but keep in mind that we have a lot of unpleasant dungeons. Uh, almost half of the dungeons are below B tier, 2 in B tier. So, uh, having only two dungeons that we're basically going to enjoy fully, hopefully, 
uh, plus Neltaras. I don't think it's going to be enough to carry the season and make it a good season, especially with all the changes that uh, um, um, that are we were expecting and, and are not happening. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, this is what we're getting for season four. I'm trying to keep my expectations low, so I'm not disappointed at the end. But do let me know what do you guys think about the dungeons? Do you agree with this tier list? Are you looking forward to playing some of the dungeons again? Or uh, you don't want to step foot in some of them ever again? Do let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Take care. And get out of here.